Hey guys, Jeff here. Uh, last week I entered in a Tinkercad Halloween competition and made this dancing skeleton and actually won the trick category for it. If you want to see more about the skeleton and my blog post for it, then look at the link in the description below and you can actually download the STL for it too so you can print your own. After I posted it, I got a request from my new friend Steven that I show how to model organic shapes in Tinkercad. And I asked him if he'd like me to model anything in particular. And he said, a lobster. A lobster? How, how, how are we going to model a lobster? We can do it. Nothing's impossible. So first things first, how do you model organic shapes? Let's get into Tinkercad real quick. So first we're going to go to Featured Shape Generators and we're going to scroll down to Extrusion. And what you're able to do is move around these nodes of the circle and then adjust the tangent line for the scale and the direction. So you can change how small it is and what direction it goes in. And what's important to note is that the little image on the screen isn't the image you're stuck with, or the shape you're stuck with, because you can then scale it in the X and Y direction independently and make a completely new looking shape. So now we're just gonna play around and make a weird little shape to cut out of the big shape. So we ended up with this little shape, and after using these techniques, trying to make a lobster, I was finally able to get to this point. Now it's relatively uh, simple in terms of detail, you, know, you don't see much detail on the face or all the spikes around the claws, and it just depends on how much time you want to spend on it. You could really develop this into an extremely detailed model. So before I start any project like this, what I like to do is do a search, an image search of what I'm modeling to get proportions right, um, to, to see how things are related to each other. And these are some pretty good lobsters here that we could, we could take some, some cues off of. So the first thing I see is for the body, uh, the egg shape. The egg shape is appropriate if you, if you scale it right. And that's a good base, so I'm gonna just play around with this for a little while. Now I noticed the head is its own separate piece, so I'm just gonna turn it around. Now this will be our first opportunity to use the extrusion feature generator. And what I like to do if I know I'm gonna use this shape a lot in a design is I'll park it off to the right and I won't modify that shape. I'll duplicate it and then modify that duplication so I can just grab it whenever I need it. So I don't have to go through all the menus and find the shape again. Okay, we have a good body, so what's next? I think we'll do the tail, I think we'll move on to the tail. We're definitely gonna need to use uh, an organic shape for the tail, so let's see what we can do here. Again, going back for some scale, see how things are related. I'll do that periodically. I'll, I'll go back and forth between the model and the pictures to, uh, to see how Now I want to get the little points of the tail. That's important, I think, to be recognized as a lobster. Um, so I'm just going to play around with some of the shapes here. And 
And as you can see here, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just moving things around, seeing what it, what it turns into, and then going from there. It's, it's hard to plan these things. You, have, you really have to just dive in and, and see what happens. So I'm not terribly happy with that. It doesn't it doesn't look close enough to the picture. So we're going to modify it a little more. Okay, that's better. That's that's definitely better. Well, oh, you see some little bits here. And, and this is one of the things you have to look out for when using these techniques. You're gonna be left with some little bits where um, shapes intersect. And all you have to do is, is adjust those shapes a little bit um, to, to catch that. So I'm happy with that for, for a good basic top shape, but I also want to do the meat. I want the meat to be kind of depicted in it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna look like it on the underside, how, how we have it modeled right now. So let's see, let's see what we can do about that. Well, I'm happy with that. So <clears throat> now it's uh, it's on to duplicating that. And something important to note here is if you duplicate something and then move it um, or rotate it, if you don't deselect it, you can just keep pushing Control D, Control D, and it'll keep the same um, same orientation. It'll it'll uh, keep the rotation and keep the distance that you initially traveled. So you don't have to keep on doing that. So that's that's a good tip there. I'm gonna check to see the length of the tail. I think I have one too long. Yeah, those those proportions look better. move on to the, the, the end of the tail. Let's see what we can do here. So I can get the, the good basic shape of the tail, but I also notice there's a bit of a dome to it. Like it's domed and it goes out from the middle. So we're gonna use this extrusion and modify the, the top shape of, of the tail too. I think we're going to use the same technique here. I actually may just steal that uh, that shape. And as you can see, it just takes some playing around a bit. You don't. There's no definite thing. You just have to move things and see how it works. back to the picture. Okay, I like that. So now we're gonna duplicate it, flip it, and move on. Okay, what's next? Um, how about these antennas? Let's do the antenna. And this is a good example of what I mentioned before about making a shape in the little box and then stretching it in either the X or Y direction 
to completely change how it looks. So we're just gonna make something really funky and then stretch it and see how it looks. you'll see the connection, connections to the head is, is different. So I think we're gonna use an egg shape and just heavily modify it so, so it looks kind of like a, a connection to the antenna. And we're gonna duplicate, flip, and move on. Now I noticed there's also smaller antenna that, that come off at the top, and I think we're just gonna borrow this one that we just made and change the shape. Yeah, those little those little guys. So what we'll do is just flip it around and scale it so it's a lot smaller, and I think that'll look good. Okay, what's next? Um, I think the legs, but I don't have a good view of them, so let's let's get a better picture of the leg. Yeah, I like that. And what you'll learn is that some shapes are too complex to make it out of just one object. So here we're gonna have to kind of piecemeal it together and <clears throat> make it out of a couple different shapes. That's completely fine. I think it actually, it's flipped. It's flipped around, let's check. I'm happy, I'm gonna duplicate it, flip all those. And then I've noticed that they kind of they kind of taper off. So the front legs are the biggest and the back legs are the smallest. So I'm just gonna scale them all. Oh, come on, take your cat. We're just gonna scale them all proportionally and then move them in so it, it fits that image. Hey, claws. I think that's the final final piece.
So I'm pretty happy with that shape, but I don't like how blocky it is. Uh, there's like a there's just there's a contour to it. Uh, they're kind of like domes. So we're gonna use the same technique that we used on the tail, and see if we could see if we could help that shape out a little bit. Yeah, that's better, that's better. We're gonna do the same for the small piece too. Oh, and again, there's a little, there's a little guy there, so you need to ungroup and, and take care of that. Just scale the, the shape. back and look at the orientation and see how it's laid out. Now we're going to move on to how the claws are connected to the body. Then it just takes a lot of adjusting just to see what, what looks right when it comes to the model. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's it. We'll group him, color him, and there he is. Your lobster, Steve. Um, well, I'm gonna call him Steve the Lobster. Steve the Lobster. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I know I went fast but I really just wanted to give you an idea of what you can accomplish with Tinkercad. And don't be discouraged if you can't see the shapes that you want to model and deconstruct them so that you can then model them in Tinkercad. I've been doing this for seven years now and the advice that I'd give you is to look at an object that you want and to take things away from it until it looks like a basic shape that's available to you to model or you can look at a shape and add things to it to make it into a basic shape that you, you can then model from. Um, and if you can't see the basic shapes, then you haven't deconstructed it or taken it apart enough. I know I'm gonna regret this, but there's nothing too complicated. With enough time and creativity, nothing's impossible to model in Tinkercad. And to prove this, I'll challenge you to come up with an idea that I can't model in Tinkercad. I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. Put your idea in a comment below.